Spiritual Bullshit with Tigmok and Maya Leela. Enjoy! Okay, well, welcome to Spiritual Bullshit. And this is Tiger, a.k.a. Tigmok, joining me, of course. Maya Leela. Hello. Hi, Maya. How are you? I'm good. I haven't even touched you today. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That sounded weird. <laughs> but uh, we literally just sat down and we started bullshitting. We're like, oh, we just got to turn it on real quick yeah. and then just get into this. We are talking about doubt. Yeah, what happens when we enter that space of doubt and how we can kind of uh, grow from it. Yeah. But anyway, so I was sharing with you my experience. Yes. Can we just go into that? Yeah, let's do Okay, so my experience is I run this shipping company. Oh, God, I hope my clients aren't listening to this. <laughs> But if they I, are, it's totally in alignment. Yeah, it's totally in alignment. Yeah. Um, so I run this uh, freight brokerage company where I essentially play the middleman between manufacturer and truck driver. And it's something that I can do from anywhere as long as I have cell phone and internet. So it allows me to travel around. And for the past five years, it's been financially supporting all my sharing. I mean, it pays for me to go kind of wherever I want to go. And, uh, and it's been really great. It's been a great expression of abundance, but now I'm in this space the last couple of years where it's like, I'm just not really into this. You know, it's like it was fun in the beginning, but now it's like not really resonating with, um, I guess in comparison to my, my desire to share. And, but it's been beautiful too, because it's been supporting that. And so I haven't really had a lot of resentments, just gratitude. And what I found too over the past couple of years is that I don't need to engage it all professionally mm. you know like I need to be like an employee or yeah. whatever and take it all seriously it's just been really something that I just have in my back pocket that I just take with me and it makes money it's almost exactly the same as my situation and it's, for mine it's been a year but it's uh, I was doing the website for a crystal room down in Mount Shasta mm -hmm. and so I, I lived in Hawaii for a while and I did it remotely and I've been doing it remotely for from here in Oregon for like seven eight months and it's been amazing and totally supportive and when I started the job I was super excited about it mm -hmm. and it was just all so perfect but now it's just no longer my highest joy and it's not resonating so much and so, but then I've been afraid to let go of it because yeah. then the doubt comes up. Well, well, this is a, a steady thing and it's bringing in income and yeah. I can do it from wherever and it's a web job and it's crystals, you know? And so then it's like, do I let go of it or right. do I hold on to it? Yeah. And so of course the temptation is always like, well, maybe I can just hold on to it and do like a few hours and still have a little bit of money that I know right. is going to be there. <laughs> but then it's just like, no, like it's not resonating. I don't really yeah. want to do this anymore. So it's not fair to me. It's not fair to them. And yeah. I just, and I know it's always that thing of like, okay, you have to let go before the next thing comes. And I'm like, yeah. maybe I just hold on to it until the next thing until is here. It's steady. It's all I know. <laughs> and so, but my intuition has just been saying like, quit, you have to quit, you have to quit. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And and so I, yeah. Today I finally did. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like I'm in that, it's not that scary. Like I feel good right now. So I'm not in the like freak out mode, yeah. but like, it, it's just so much energy that's yeah. like, ending that and like letting go of that and now I have more energy for other things like this yeah. things that I'm really excited about yeah things that just get you going yeah and it like it almost carries you it's like there's an, this enthusiasm behind it that gives life to your expression yeah it's like letting your heart sink yeah rather exactly. than forcing it into a cage and I love that we're talking about this because I just know it resonates with so many people oh yeah they're in that space of you know just being in a job and wondering what the hell you know because I gotta pay my bills yeah. and, and all of that and um, I remember like my experience before I started my own company, I was in an office mm -hmm. and there'd be times I'd walk outside and just start crying mm -hmm. because it just totally didn't resonate. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I'll get into a little bit about the transition out of that and, and how life supported it. But with my experience now, the shipping company, life has asked me to let go of it. Mm -hmm. And I've been letting go of it over the past couple years in the way of really focusing on sharing and having the shipping company be total, totally secondary mm -hmm. and not be like it has to keep going. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in this position where I'm just letting life do whatever it wants to do. If it wants to make money with this, then great. You know, yeah. I'm available yeah. because, again, it doesn't really take a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. I just kind of need to be available to my clientele. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't need that many clients for me to kind of sustain, you know, uh, a lifestyle. And so... Now in this space, I'm so engaged with the School of Blooming energetically mm -hmm. that that's kind of the only thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not actively seeking um, opportunities to make money with my company. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of just sitting back and if customers want to call me, then great. But yeah. I'm not like calling them, you know, or trying to drum up business. Yeah. And it's weird because I've totally gone into like this lazy space about it. Mm -hmm. 
But for me, it just feels like a trust yeah. that life is the one that provides. Yeah. It's not the job. It's not this particular stream. It's just life as a whole that's mm-hmm. providing. And so the other day, I'm kind of taking a look at my finances. And I'm like, huh, I'm really not making any money right now. Mm-hmm. But yet, I, and I've got kind of a, a pretty big overhead mm-hmm. just for the lifestyle that I've had from running that business. And yeah. it's done well. And so I'm starting to question, okay, maybe I just need to give all this shit back to the bank. Yeah. You know, and just yeah, kind of start an over. Option. It is an option and I'm totally okay with it too, which I love. Yeah. You know, I love this freedom inside that says I don't need it to be this way. I don't really care about my credit. Yeah. Um, and that's where I got I got to that space yeah. too, like a few years ago. I was living in Italy and I ran out of money and I was like, <gasps> and so and I had like a few bills, like credit card things, yeah. and I was like, Well, I don't have any money and so I'm not gonna pay them. And, you know, fuck it. And, like, yeah. if my credit gets messed up for a while, I'm not – I don't need it for anything. Right. And so I, I just – I call all of my credit cards and I was like, I don't have any money right now. I'm sorry. I can't pay you. I'll pay you when I can. And it was so liberating because yeah. there's that fear. Like, I have to pay my bills. But yeah. it's like, well, yeah, like, you'd like to pay your bills. But if you can't, then that's okay, too. Life like, they don't awesome. come and take you to jail, you know, which I kind of thought they did maybe. With, right. You that's know? the but fear. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you just said because you addressed it. You didn't yeah. hide from it. You were yeah. just honest about it. Yeah. And that's my strategy too. It's like, and that's kind of how I came out of this space of poverty and low income housing mm-hmm. was I was in this space of trying to hide from all my creditors yeah. and trying to avoid it and dodge it. And that's an awful feeling. It is an awful yeah. but that's the and vibration. Your phone and your, yeah. 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 But in, and you're sitting in that frequency of yeah. fear and hiding, which life can't really move through. Yeah. And so I just got honest. Yeah. And in a funny way, what I would kind of do is I'd get, you know, 10 calls a day yeah. and I would tell them, okay here's a situation I'm putting all of your guys' name in a hat yeah you know and if you call me again I'm gonna take your name out of the hat you know and I pick three of them a month and these are the ones that get paid and so if you keep calling me you're not gonna go in the hat well that's the thing is there's human beings on the other line yes and so like it is it is kind of fun like when they call like I've got one calling me right now and and I haven't answered the last two calls but I'm like okay like I just need to call this guy back and just be like and this is what's going on and like connect with them because if you can have fun with it then you can actually connect with people which feels good and 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 it's great because it's not the human being that you're talking to that's demanding money from you. Yeah. It's just their job. Yeah, it's their job. You know, and so they're doing what we're all doing, just yeah. trying to pay the bills and yeah. whatever. And so I love connecting with people on that yeah. level when they call. You just remove the fear. Yeah. It's it's like you're not a victim of this person. Yeah. They're just doing their job. And so that's really great. And and diving into the sincerity of that realigns your frequency. Yeah. Which is in this space of trust. Yeah. Because again, if you're not living from a space of honesty, mm-hmm. then you're living in a space of fear, mm-hmm. and that's not in alignment with what you want. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. And so then you're like in a hell. Like yeah. you're in a self created hell. Yeah. And and after that that point, like I got to that zero point of like, and then after that, shortly after that, I got some money and I paid off all my credit cards. And then yeah. so for a few years, I didn't have any debt at all. And then like it kind of I kind of go through cycles, you know, mm-hmm. like because sometimes I'm like, oh, like I don't want any debt. I want to be free. And then I'll do that for a while, and then you know something will come up, and I'm like, okay, like I feel like it's the right time to right. take on credit again. And so I've done that, but this time I feel like I'm more trusting in a place right, right. of like. Okay, I've got this credit card debt again, which is not my ideal, but I know I'll pay it off. Yeah. And then, you know, and then I won't have it anymore. And then yeah. again, I'll get to a future point where I can choose whether or not to engage in that whole system in yes, yes, the yes, game, yes. you know. So. Oh my God, we're touching on so many things here. Or it's like <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to dig so deep into to so much of the stuff about like abundance and all of that. Yeah. But um, to stay on this point of doubt and trusting, yeah. um, it, and it's like, it's amazing. We were just talking about this post the other day, how uh, when I when we look at the way each moment unfolds into itself, mm-hmm. it's amazing that we could ever doubt. Yeah. But yet we still find ourselves in that space. Yeah. And so a couple of days ago, I'm looking at the finances and I'm like, I really don't know how this is going to resolve itself. Yeah. And it's so funny too, because from a, from a linear human perspective, the answer is to go back to work. Yeah. You know, to re-engage my company and be all serious and yeah. make cold calls and yeah. stuff, which totally doesn't interest me. Yeah. And uh, and so that's not a valid option for me yeah. to stress myself exactly. out or I'm do something that I don't place. want to do. Exactly. And so I'm looking at all this and I remind myself, it's like, you know what, Tiger? This is the same story every month. Yeah. Just this space of the unknown. Yeah. And that's where life has the opportunity to work a miracle. Yeah. And so the unknown space, the doubt space is an opportunity for me to trust Mm -hmm. and that which gives life to everything Mm -hmm. rather than trying to trust little divisions of life. Mm -hmm. It's like I need to trust this thing or this thing. It's like, no, you trust all of it. Yeah. You just kind of surrender into that and kind of let go, which 
again, can seem like an irresponsible thing, but yeah. it's where it's coming from. Yeah. Because you, you really see the beauty of life and how it always works out, and you, then you just trust that. And so, of course, I get a phone call you know, from a customer, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, shit, here's a whole bunch of work for me to do. Yeah. And it's funny because, again, I had no idea where it was coming from. Yeah. And, but, but it's been the story for the past two years where it's like, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Yeah. I really don't. I, it's like I have no security, yeah. but yet the abundant state seems to always be there. And that's, that's exactly and, what and it's so happens funny. to me. Too, it's like yeah. it forces me into this state of laziness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there's, that's a good word is lazy, which yeah. is do what you don't want to do because you should. Right. And then, you know, not like it, like, I feel like there's that whole thing with like being lazy because you're yeah. not taking action where you're supposed to be taking action. Right. And so like, how can we not be lazy, but be like surrendered or relaxed yeah. in the flow? Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. Oh, did you need something done? Okay. Um, so yeah, it's relaxing into that flow. Again, it's not lazy. I think lazy is some sort of sense of denial where you're just kind of checking out of your own sincerity. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, or it's like a resistance. Yeah. Maybe resistance. More to, like, yeah. It's like the negative side of the positive. I can almost see like laziness being resistant to honesty mm. to where you're not addressing what needs to be addressed. Yeah. Um, but for my space, I, I feel like I'm just overall kind of a lazy person in the way that I don't feel like I have a lot of like self-control that says I need to do this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. um, I really just surrender that. It's like, you know, the only thing I know right now is the present moment. Yeah. And here's what feels good. Here's what feels enjoyable. So I'm going to watch, you know, a Netflix marathon mm -hmm. during the work day. Mm -hmm. But again, from a, a social perspective, that's just irresponsible. But you know what? That's funny because that's kind of how I built my business going into it. Mm -hmm. I left the company I was working at. I was like, I can just do this shit on my own. Mm -hmm. And so... Is I, this your transition story that you're talking about? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, it's about like the transition. Yeah. Well, that's part of part of it. I, I left that company and it's, it was such a crazy story of how it all came about to run my own thing. But essentially I left that job, tried to move to Las Vegas to pursue something else, which turned out to be a disaster. Mm. Um, did you want to go to Vegas? Well, yeah, was I was, gonna, thing? I was going to go to Vegas to do my sleight of hand magic that okay, I did. Yeah. Um, which since I've been six years old, I've done close up magic mm -hmm. and it was a passion of mine, but I don't like doing it in a job setting, Okay. which I learned more and more. Okay. It's something yeah. that just has to be spontaneous and fun. Now I used to do it professionally, but now it's just for fun. But I was going to go over there, and I found a job online, which I was going to go interview for. And mm -hmm. I just knew that if I interviewed for it, then I'd get the job, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is kind of my experience with jobs. Yeah. If I get an interview, then it's done. Yeah. Um, and so I went over there, but the job ended up not being essentially what they told me it was going to okay. be. There was some deception there. and so Slide I sleight of hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they totally got me, man. They pulled a, a magic trick on me. And so I tried to do the job for a couple of weeks, but it was like, this is just bullshit. Yeah. And then um, essentially went broke, moved back here. And this is when I was married at the time. And so my family had moved out of the place, kind of waiting for me to give a green light to mm. come over. And so it was just like this beautiful disaster. Yeah. And so I came back. We were all living at my mom's house. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't have any money. I don't. And, it, and it, it was funny. It's like the question was, do I go back and get a job? Yes. And it yeah. was like, hell no. Yeah. It's like I couldn't find it within myself to go back into that dynamic yeah. that I knew wasn't resonant. Yeah. And so long story short, I ended up just opening my own freight brokerage and I started to hit it really hard in the way of like being serious about it. It was like, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. But I found that I burnt myself out like trying to do a hundred cold calls a day mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it came to this point where it's like, you know what, Tiger, don't do this unless you can do it with joy, mm -hmm. unless you can authentically enjoy this experience, then just don't do it. Mm -hmm. And again, that was like a big risk because mm -hmm. it wasn't the socially responsible thing to do. Yeah. And so I set up shop and I was like, okay, what do I really feel like doing? And it was like watching Netflix. So I'd set up, sit up in my office and just watch Netflix. And then I'd get this like urge to make a call. Yeah. And then I would do that because that felt good. Yeah. But so I went from like making a hundred cold calls a day to like five, mm -hmm. but those five were so much more impactful yeah. because I was fully present yeah. and enjoying it. Yeah. And so the energy comes off over the phone. And whether or not you were tapping into some greater knowing and intuition right, right. or you were just feeling better. And so yeah. when you called, people are like, oh, this guy feels good. You yeah. Know? It, like yeah. whether or not it was the internal, the external doesn't really matter doesn't because matter. it works. It and works. That was the same thing with my experience. Yeah. And I came to a point where... I was living in Argentina and I was trying to decide, okay, do I go back? I was like running out of money. I was like, do I go back 
to LA and move in with the folks and get a job right. or do I go somewhere else? And right. I didn't want to go home and get a job. And so I moved to Italy with like no idea what would happen. And then I ended up finding this place at this ashram and working there for a year. And it was an amazing experience, but wow. I totally took that leap of like, I just, I know I don't want to go get a job, but I have no idea how this is going to work. And it totally yeah. worked out in these amazing magical and see, ways. And listening to your story, it fills me with so much enthusiasm to keep living life. <laughs> right? <laughs> because it is, it brings you to this place of total trust where it's like, you know what? This is, this is true. Yeah. This is how it works. Well, time and time, time again, and time I again. see it. And then, so that's again, like I've been in this place for the last couple of months of like phasing out my old job, which I just yeah. don't resonate with anymore. And then working on different projects that aren't necessarily income generating at the moment, but I'll get like a call from a friend who's like, oh, can you build me a site for a few hundred bucks? Yeah. Or like somebody else will be, my aunt sent me like $500 in the mail for, you know, for my birthday, but it was like such perfect timing. Yeah. Like my bank account was at zero. And she's like, here's yeah. $500. And I was like, you have no idea how yeah. amazing this is. Yeah. And it's almost like that contrast too of like getting down to that zero point and then just receiving. Yeah. Like if I had a thousand in the bank and then she gave me five hundred dollars, I'd be like, oh thanks. You yeah. know? Yeah, so it creates a good contrast yeah. where it's like you get to see the miracle of life. Yeah. And I think another important aspect of that as far as being open and allowing is kind of the non care attitude. Mm -hmm. It's like for me, I've been homeless before mm -hmm. and so I'm not really that concerned about it. Yeah. You know? Because I can still travel around and share. Yeah. Because inside of me, that's really the only thing I want to do. Yeah. You know, whether I'm driving a nice car or having a nice house, these things just really don't matter. Yeah. But when you're experiencing expressing yourself or letting your heart sing it's like that's the richness in life yeah. and I don't really need money to do that yeah and then as I am traveling around and sharing it's like people give you money here and there and yeah. it's like that's great everything but, gets taken care of and there's this interesting thing too with that whole the, I mean there's a fear of being homeless but there's also the fear of needing help or asking for help or receiving even yeah. like people saying like oh let me buy you dinner and it's like oh no like I don't want to receive that or yeah. I don't want to owe you or like these there's all these weird yeah you know, things that go on in our minds that stop this beautiful thing where like if you give a salt sign and someone really does want to buy you dinner yeah, and that would be a gift and it would bring them joy to give to you, a lot of yeah. people won't receive. Yeah, and that's the the lesson in it, you know, for us going through that. Yeah. And, and I've experienced that before too. And then uh, also, you know, moving into this space of just being open to receive whatever life wants to bring to mm -hmm. you. Um, and I know I've talked to many friends about that who have a really easy time giving mm -hmm. but a difficult time receiving. And... And so life orchestrates experiences yeah. for us to open ourselves up. And yeah. if we don't, then it's painful. Yeah. Because I, I used to, like a few years ago, it was really hard for me to receive or even ask for help. Like, hey, can you lend me $100? Like, I felt like I was a failure. Yeah. Like, I had all this stuff. And, and I was terrified of it. And finally, yeah. I, I had to go through that, though. I had to get to that place, you know, because I'd always worked jobs and I'd always right. supported myself. And so going through that was this huge, powerful lesson of, of just seeing really clearly like my own fears and blockages yeah. and then reaching out to a friend and be like, Hey, can I borrow money? And they're like, well, of course, why didn't you ask? Like, why'd you wait so long? And yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't know, but I didn't want to ask. And I felt like a, you know, and, uh, yeah. That's so awesome. It, it reminds me of my experience of transferring out of this poverty state. Yeah. Um, and it was so funny because, and this is when I got married, um, shit, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had, entered into this marriage with some sort of strategy or plan to do take on this work project that ultimately didn't end up happening. So it was like, oh, shit. And so I immediately went into like this, you know, subsidized housing, mm -hmm. food stamps, mm -hmm. and all of that, and just totally felt like a complete failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it got to a point where I was like going to some work thing where you show up and wait for a job. You know, it's like a construction mm -hmm. yeah. job where they take you out yeah. or whatever. And I had zero experience, so I'd be the guy sitting there that wouldn't get called on because they'd go over my thing and he, he can't do shit. <laughs> you know, uh, a nail gun. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and so I would just sit there and I, and I tried that for one day, but I sat there all day and yeah. it didn't happen, which was great because that didn't resonate at all. Yeah. I was really trying to force it. But anyway, so coming out of this poverty state, the lesson for me was that this didn't define my worth mm -hmm. because I really felt like I was a failure yeah. that I couldn't be, of a value to anything or anyone because I wasn't making money. Yeah. And so I yeah, really had to see, one. I had to see my own worth and value beyond that. Yeah. 
which which is beautiful to go through because now I can look at other people in those space and be like, you're perfect. Yeah. You know, this is the perfect lesson for you to go through. Yeah. And it doesn't define your value or your lovability. Yeah. And so going... Which is huge it's, in our, it's so in our huge. society. Yeah. Like, you're, that's what you get your value yeah. and your lovability and your worth is yeah. from how much money you're making or how productive are you in yeah. our society. And so when you're in that space of making money, having gone through that lesson, yeah. then there's less, like, attachment to the money. Yeah. Because it's like, you know at any moment that this could change. And it doesn't change anything about who you are, mm -hmm. which is a really beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. And also through that transition, I noticed in myself, there was this, this inquiry that said, I don't understand how I can be so broke because I'm a nice guy. Mm. You know, I had this idea that if I was just a nice guy, then life would take care of me. Mm -hmm. But what I discovered is it wasn't so much about that as it was about the frequency that I was holding. Because mm -hmm. you can still be a nice person, but still hold a broke frequency. Yeah. And so yeah. I had all of these judgments about people who had more than me yes, and almost didn't even one. note it. Yeah. It's like I'd see somebody driving a nice car and be like, that's excessive. Yeah. You or know? they're an asshole. Yeah. Or they're an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Or they're shallow. Or yeah. like all these things. Projecting yeah. some sort of inequality yeah. for other people that had more than me. Yeah. Or to bring them down. To bring like, them down. Like you have to level it out somehow because right. they have and I don't. So they must, yeah. they must be shallow and asshole. Yeah. yeah. And, and what kind of broke this open for me was the idea or the concept that somebody else from another country could look at my tiny apartment mm. and be like, that's too much. Yeah. It's like, right? well, you have two bathrooms. That's excessive. <laughs> yeah. You have two bathrooms. <laughs> what? <laughs> for a family of four, that's extreme. Yeah. And so there's all these comparisons yeah. that can be made that are completely null and void. It's so relative. And so if somebody has a $10 million home yeah. or a hundred thousand dollar home, the universe's perspective is equality. Yeah. It's like it simply doesn't matter. And so what are all of these judgments in my mind that are trying to pro proclaim one is better than the other mm -hmm. rather than just letting people have the freedom to experience whatever is necessary? Yeah. Because wherever anybody's at, that's the appropriate lesson, and that's what matters. Yeah. And we have no idea what it is. Exactly. Because, yeah, the, the, like the appropriate lesson, that's a huge one too. It's like whether the person has the $100 million home or has nothing yeah. it's like and it's like that's the perfect lesson for them or whatever like we have no idea it isn't yeah. like oh because i find that too it's like there's that thing about trying to figure out what the, the right lesson is or the yeah. right thing is especially for other people yeah exactly and that's what i found like for my own experience is i don't know yeah and so i don't need to give attention about other people's lives, mm -hmm. whether they should or should not be doing mm -hmm. it, which frees me up to kind of just focus on my own shit. Yeah, so much energy yeah. is spent doing that. Well, like, it's like we judge people in their circumstances because we don't want to look at our own yeah. circumstance with sincerity and honesty. Yeah. And it's like, if we can point out the fault in others, then we don't need to look at our own yeah. experience. And so that was the huge lesson for me. And as soon as I started to break down those limiting thoughts and beliefs, it was almost just like this automatic shift that took place where I was now open to receive an abundant experience mm -hmm. beyond effort and mm -hmm. beyond trying. And this is the thing that I, I know that I can never adequately communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, the depth of the miracle and how it truly wants to support you, yeah. but yet you have to be willing to let it in. Yeah. By letting go of limiting thoughts and judgments that we hold on to in a way that we think are true. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's that's another thing that, I, the, again, like the last few months of like getting down to this zero point of like the money like comes in and it goes out. And I was like, oh, like, why don't I have like savings or money, you know, left? And my friend was like, well, it's kind of perfect, it sounds like, because you're getting in exactly as much as you need. Yeah. And it's like air. Like, yeah. Like you don't have savings of air you just breathe in you breathe out you breathe in you breathe out yeah. and I was like that's totally right and thank that. you for that like it totally shifted my perspective of like this time that I'm in right now yeah. I'm getting exactly as much as I need yeah you know which is sometimes yeah. like scary because you want to have that like chunk and right. something in the bank but even if you have that chunk and I heard Alan Watts talk about this yeah about uh you know it if you have a million dollars then you're just afraid of losing it all mm. and mm -hmm. so you know for some people's experiences it's like worry will always have an opportunity to be there yeah whether it's about your health your relationship or money mm -hmm. but yet we're always provided for in the present moment mm -hmm. and this is what I constantly come back to is just well how does right now look yeah and then put all of my chips in right now yeah. and then just keep moving forward in joy yeah. and so I find myself having an experience where I can just be joyful no matter what mm -hmm. and let tomorrow take care of mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. 
which I think is the greatest abundance of all, yeah. being able to be here in this moment fully present with joy. And appreciating all of the riches you do have. Like you're saying, yeah. that comparison with another country, it's yeah. like I'm living lavishly compared yeah. to like 98% of the world. True, true, Even if true. I only have like $5 U.S. cash, I've got tons of organic food. I've got yeah. like this house. I've got hot running water. I've got friends. Yeah. I've got a car. I've got gas in the car. You know, like yeah. all this stuff that so many people don't have. And you have such an opportunity to focus on the gratitude yeah. of those things. And again, everyone in their life, it's like we have this contrast where we can focus on lack or focus on the abundance that's already here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a defining moment too for our, our own growth is to realize that, oh my God, there's so much to be thankful for. Yeah. But if you're comparing yourself to people who you think have more than you, which again is making some sort of fantasy in the mind, mm -hmm. then you're just totally disconnected from the flow. And that's where the doubt comes in. Yeah. Because the doubt is focusing on all the things you don't have or all the yeah. things that might happen and like the negative yeah. stories. And it is. It's totally focused on the non-real reality. Yeah. It's like, for example, it's like with my shipping company, it's like, okay, I could make $5,000 or lose and lose $1,000 or whatever. So there's this play of gain and loss. Mm -hmm. But what I realize that these things aren't even really happening. Yeah. It's like whether a number goes up on a screen you know, when I log into my bank account, right, yeah. it's like, what the fuck does that have to do <laughs> yeah. with reality? Because it's like, okay, so it goes plus five, uh, but I don't know if that plus five is leading towards a negative 10. Yeah. Or if the negative two is leading towards a plus six. Yeah. It's like, because you don't know. And I've had these experiences where I've lost money only to see that it led to a gain of money. Mm -hmm. And so the loss isn't really a loss. Is it ever? Is it yeah. ever? <laughs> and is the gain ever really a gain? Yeah. Because yeah. you just don't know. Yeah. And so I give up completely on relying on that yeah. to tell me how I should be feeling. Totally. And that's like that parable. It's like some, you know, Buddhist Zen parable about the old, the father and he has a son and the son falls off a horse, horse and breaks his leg. And they're like, oh, that's horrible. And he's like, maybe. And then the army comes and they don't recruit him because he has a broken leg. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's awesome. And he's like, maybe. And it's like this. Like, the story never ends, so you, yeah, never know. you never know. There's never a point of saying, okay, yes, it was definitely gain or definitely lost. You're definitely yeah. good or definitely bad definitely bad because it's continuous yeah. and I love because that points to the freedom to not take your emotional cue yeah. from the manifest world yeah. and this is something I learn more and more about it's like wow my emotional response really it's responding to the story that I'm telling at the moment at the moment yeah and so I'm learning more and more to not take my emotional cue or how I should be feeling by what I see on the surface yeah. and the question is how I feel is determined by what's true mm -hmm. and if I stick with what's true mm -hmm. then I'm feeling joy yeah because I'm not looking for life to tell me how I feel. And this is what most of us are doing as, mm -hmm. as human beings, mm -hmm. is we're looking at our job and our relationship mm -hmm. and all of these external factors to say, how should I be feeling right we now? We have what we don't have. Yeah, yeah which is yeah. totally reactionary and yeah. isn't consciously creating. Yeah. It's consciously or unconsciously reacting to a dream state. And it's slavery. It's not freedom. Totally, totally slavery. Because then you're a slave to the externals yeah. and your interpretation of the externals. Oh my God. Yeah. There's so much freedom to be discovered yeah. there. Yeah, to see, and, and I think that that's where it gets into free will, yeah. from my perspective, again, is about attention. Yeah. I have the freedom to put my attention on whatever I want, yeah. given these, the playing field that arises, you know. <coughs> and you have the freedom to create your own internal state. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And to clarify in there, too, it's like... It's like you're presented with this, this present moment experience, which may not allow you to feel the full spectrum, mm -hmm. but it allows you to feel positive or negative within that moment, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like you could be going through an energetic depressed state of being, which says, okay, I can't be super enthusiastic about whatever mm -hmm. like I was yesterday, mm -hmm. but there's still an element of improvement in my state of being, mm -hmm. which is really like, like for example, if I'm just having an experience emotionally where I can't be all hippity happy but yet I can have this peace that allows myself to feel and give myself permission to feel sad if that's what's happening, mm -hmm. then that sadness turns into a joyful sadness. And so it's not to say that we, we constantly feel the energy of happy, yeah. but rather we have the opportunity to always be with peace yeah. about whatever's happening. And then also, once you're in that sadness and then and the joy comes back because it always does or the yeah. happiness and then it's part of that circle of like winter to summer exactly. like summer's awesome because you go through the winter yeah and and so it's like they're all part of that whole and that's yeah. what makes it beautiful and yeah, enjoyable yeah, yeah. because not just that you're always happy 
but that you go through these movements yeah. and you have the contrast. And like with the seasons, as long as you allow the season to be the season, yeah. then it's not a problem. Yeah. But if you're arguing with wintertime because you have an identity mm. issue with summertime, mm -hmm. it's like, I can't be who I need to be mm -hmm. because the sun's not out. Or I don't like rain. I don't want it to rain. Why yeah. is it raining today? Yeah. I don't it's like It's messing that. up my hair, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. idea of who I am. Yeah. But really, if you just surrender to it, you can dance in the rain mm -hmm. and realize that the rain doesn't touch you. Mm -hmm. And smell it. Enjoy the yeah. smell of it. And yeah. The thunderstorm. Yeah. Lightning. Yeah. yeah, so embracing the seasons really helps you to allow a nice flow yeah. where you're flowing with life again and not trying to create your own life per se. And not a slave to it. And yeah. not a slave to the seasons or to yeah. a slave to what is for your reactions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, we're covering so many fantastic things. I know. That, I feel like when I've listened to the last episodes, it's like because we touch on so many things and I'm always like, oh, but like we can like write a whole book on this one thing yeah. and then we're on to the next thing and I'm like, ah. Yeah, well, but, I think that's part of the fun of this show yeah. too is, is we can just kind of show up and bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, because again, it's like you and I are just hanging out, talking about how yeah. awesome life is, and then we got a microphone <laughs> running at the same time. That's hella cool. Well, oh back to doubt. Back to doubt. I doubts. I feel like doubts one of like the last bastions of stuff that I've been working through, like because it when you're living in alignment and joy most of the time, when the doubt comes, it's. You know, almost debilitating sometimes because yeah, you know you're like especially when we're living because we're living this life that's not normal and so to commit to it and to really have this path of like okay i'm following my heart mm -hmm. i'm not going to do what i'm supposed to do or what people say or people might think i'm crazy yeah and so when the doubt comes in it's like it's it's huge yeah. for me sometimes yeah. it's like oh my god like if i start doubting what i'm doing yeah <laughs> well, I love it too. And I, and I think the doubt is a normal part of the process. Yeah. And the way that I work with doubt is to recognize that it's not really me doubting. It's my story. Yeah. It's my false identity that is afraid that wants to make sure its story, you know, continues on it's in a protected. safe way. Yeah, yeah. And protected. Yeah. And so it's like whenever I start hearing those voices of doubt, I almost agree with them mm -hmm. saying, you know what, you're right. The idea of me is not good enough to mm -hmm. make this work. Mm -hmm. The idea of the separate me does not have enough power to do whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like a surrendering into mm -hmm. that. It's like going back to the beginning and being like, I'm not that person. And that person isn't even real. Mm -hmm. And so what is real? Mm -hmm. And the realness is the allowing for me to be with doubt if doubt is happening. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like sadness. It's yeah. like if I argue with sadness, it becomes more difficult. Yeah. But if I just kind of surrender to it and go with the flow, which means I might have to check out for a little while. Yeah. You know, and just let that be there. Yeah. And let and it process. Sit in it. It's yeah. Like, yeah. And also I see it as a time to integrate the wisdom that we're learning. Yeah. To embody the trust. Because it's like if you don't practice trust, then it doesn't gain in strength. Yeah. And so these opportunities where doubt come, it's like that's just the perfect fucking opportunity mm -hmm. to embody what you know. Mm -hmm. Perfect gift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you get stronger <laughs> as you go through it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's definitely true. Yeah. It's kind of like if you get the flu or something, your body's getting stronger. Yeah. And so you just go with it. Or you go work out and your body gets stronger. You meditate. Yeah. Your yeah. brain, you know, it actually thickens your prefrontal cortex. Yeah. And it, it makes physical changes. And again, like the transition I'm going through now, like when I first, when I was laid off of my tech job in LA in 2011, even at that point, I was so excited to like move on from that lifestyle. But there's still like that terror of like yeah. shifting from that having a regular job to not having a regular job. And like right now, the transition I'm going through, like it's it's just excitement. Like the fear is like a one percent, right, you know, right, because right. I'm just like I know it's gonna be fine and it's all working out perfectly, you know. And I have so much faith and trust because I've exercised that muscle over and over yeah. by taking the leaps yeah. and looking the doubt and the the fear and everything yeah. in the face and the terror and being like, you know what, I'm gonna make this crazy choice because I feel like I'm following my heart and it's true for me. And then I do it and then it works out. I'm like, oh, and again, yeah. it's like that that trust muscle, like you were yeah. saying. And it works out in its own way. Yeah. From my experience, it never works out how I think it's going to no, work No, no, totally. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, okay, well, this this will happen, this will happen, and I'll be fine. And it's like, no, yeah. that doesn't work out at all. Yeah. But, like, something comes out of left field, and you're exactly. like, oh, my God, that's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's so much better than I thought it was yeah, going to be. Yeah, exactly. No, that's perfect. And I think, I mean, that's the spiritual path, too, is yeah. just being sincere about what resonates with you. Yeah. And turning away from the nonsense of the world mm -hmm. and the way that it operates out of fear and insecurity yeah. and moving into the heart and asking, what does the heart really desire? What is 
my heart. Will yeah. Say, yeah, mine. Yeah. Nobody else's, just mine. And then yeah. move in that direction. And I think that's what embodies this wisdom and insight. Yeah. But if you're not willing to take that leap of faith mm-hmm. or even the step of faith when you can't see the next step. Like Indiana Jones when he steps on, you know that one with Harrison Ford and he steps oh, on the bridge geez. and he can't see it. So he has to yeah. like make this, just like step out into this chasm and then there's a, 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 like a see-through bridge that's there and it says foot lands. Oh, I got to watch it now. Oh my God, it's so That's good. totally not in my brain. Okay. But uh, I feel like I was like nine years old last time I saw it. I that. love it. Well, you should, they hold up pretty well. Yeah. I recommend that everybody rewatch the Indiana Jones show. <laughs> it's so good. But there's like this scene is really like the epitome of taking that step of faith because yeah. he can't see the bridge and the bridge doesn't actually appear until yeah. he puts his foot out and takes the step. Yeah. And that's happened to me so many times. Like when I moved to Maui to birth my daughter, my intuition kept saying, go to Maui, go to Maui. And I, for months, I tried to find people or connections or something yeah. to like give me that security. And it just, it would not happen. Yeah. And so I just had to book the ticket and I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm taking the leap. And it, then it, after I bought the ticket, then everything unfolded. I love that. Yeah. I it's love terrifying. that. It is terrifying. I was eight months, eight and a half months pregnant. Oh, my god. And, gosh. like, $200 in my pocket. And I was like, ah. And then here you are in now. Yeah. And everything's fine. Everything worked out amazingly. <laughs> and I met so many people and magical things. And I had a six-hour labor. And Shasta's happy and healthy. And, yeah, yeah it was magical. Yeah. But it was terrifying making that choice. Yeah, and, and that's funny. And we can also go into following our heart, but also having self doubt yeah. in the way of I don't know if I'm good enough mm-hmm. to do this. Mm-hmm. And I know for my path, that's that was kind of the big thing early on. It's like okay, I'm having all this awesome insight and wisdom, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I can't control it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. not like it's the idea of me that's having it. It's just a flow within. Yeah. But I don't know if it's gonna stop. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's yeah. gonna be there. It's kind of like doing sat song showing up. It's like I don't know what the fuck to talk about. Yeah. But I'll I'll close my eyes and then, oh shit, here comes some insight and wisdom. Yeah. And so for myself, there's always kind of been this self-doubt, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful self-doubt reminding me that I'm not the one, mm-hmm. you know, from a separate aspect yeah. that's going to make it happen. And so there's always like this, this personal doubt that knows my own character or knows my own tendencies mm-hmm. that... I don't trust. Mm -hmm. It's like, I really don't trust myself to be productive, Mm -hmm. you know, because I'm just not that kind of guy. But yet somehow, some way when shit needs to get done, it gets done. Yeah. Yeah. What what really needs to get done, not what my mind thinks needs to get done. Yeah. And so there's this continual trusting of that, that I don't need to be like a superstar productive, you know, workhorse that I can really just fall into the flow and whatever needs to happen happens and I can still move forward. Yeah. Um, and not know if I'm going to follow through or not know if it's going to work out. Yeah. And being okay with that. Yeah. Like, you know what? Okay, maybe I don't follow through. Does that mean that I'm a failure? Does it mean that yeah. I'm not good enough? Does it mean I'm not trying hard enough? Like all these things that we make it mean. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of paralyzes us is this idea that it's not going to work out. Yeah. And so I think it's good just to come to terms with that, that you know what? It's not going to work out. It's not going to work out in the way that my mind thinks it's going to work out. Yeah. And so you just like, you admit that. Yeah. And then from that space, then there's no more outcome that has to happen. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, this is a present moment experience rather than a future yeah. experience. And so I know that's a lot of the hesitancy that I went through was not knowing if it was going to work. Yeah. And I've done so many like business ventures that have failed. It's really been amazing. Yeah. Like how much of a failure. <laughs> Which that's what I've they been. say. That's what leads yeah. to success. Cause you yeah. do like you go through all these things and you either build your trust muscle or you've just, you, you clarified. I feel yeah. like too, like you tried going to work as a magician yeah. and you tried it and you're like, okay, wait, I don't want to do this, but yeah. you wouldn't have known that until you tried it. Exactly. So now that kind of cuts. So I feel like for me, it's, it's doing that has cut away all these things that in the back of my mind, I was like, well, maybe I'd want to be a translator in Italy. Yeah. And I, like for years, I was like, well, maybe I would love that. And yeah. then I went and did it and I was like, ah, like I did it for a while. I translated yoga and all this stuff. And I was like, I'd rather speak my own words right. than translate somebody else's words. Yeah. And so then I was able to release that. And so I feel like. And that's so beautiful. Yeah. It's like a cutting away. Yeah. It's like, and even it's like, you'll get a desire in the heart that wants to move in a particular direction, but maybe the heart isn't saying we need to go till completion. Mm-hmm. It's like, we just need to discover something, Yeah. you know, that will help clarify. Yeah. And so I know a lot of us, we have this tendency that says, okay, well, I see my heart going in this direction, but I don't know if it's going to work out or yeah. if I don't know if it's going to look like this. But... Or if I can trust my heart. Yeah. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe I'm exactly. crazy. Yeah. And I think that just kind of comes back to 
to like, well, where is joy? Yeah. You know, where is like this authentic enthusiasm for being alive? Yeah. What makes your heart sing? And then just go in that direction and who gives a shit yeah. what happens? Yeah. And who knows? And yeah, and it doesn't mean anything whether yeah. you do it once or whether you do it for a year because it isn't like you have yeah. to commit to it. Yeah. Like these podcasts, we're not like, okay, we're going to do one a week for the next 12 months. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like, and Write then, a contract. You know, yeah. <laughs> or, even, or even like, you know, you're supposed to do it consistently. You're supposed yeah. to do these things. And it's like, well, we, this might be the last one. Yeah. Like there's no plan. There's yeah. no like expectation, which is so liberating yeah. to, to, for it to be alive. Exactly. And like we really, we want to sit down and have this conversation today. Yes, let's do this. Yeah. If we don't want to do it ever again, then okay, next yeah. thing. You know. And the beauty too is it's like we do one and now it's online forever. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I love about this kind of content is uh, we can share it one time and then it's just available. Yeah. yeah. And and I feel like two people tend to find things when they need to hear it. Yeah. Because I know that's been my journey. Like there's been like Alan Watts or Abraham yeah. Hicks or like so many authors that I found their stuff right when I needed to hear that message. Yeah. And so, yeah, by, by sharing our excitement, we put that out there and maybe some in two years, somebody will click on this randomly and yeah. they'll hear the message that they need to make their own leap. Yeah. And that's amazing. Like that's yeah. like, oh, it's and, so and it's like, the beauty in the process for me, and I'm sure it is for you. It's like the real benefit of you and I doing this is very selfish Yeah. in oh, a way yeah. that we're not really doing it for other people. Yeah. It's like, we're enjoying it. Yeah. And, and it, con it concretizes my version of reality because yeah. you live in the same version of reality. Yeah. And so for me, it not even that makes me feel better, but it's just like, I'm solidifying my reality by having these conversations yeah. because they're my truth. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we're just reminding ourselves yeah. and hanging out, having a good time, being in joy. Yeah. And so we're we're resonating at a certain frequency. Yeah. And so and I think that's part of the beauty too, because again, if everything's energy and like attracts like, then the point is to resonate within a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? You do what you enjoy. Mm -hmm. You do what authentically feels good and honest. Yeah. And again, it's not like higher or lower, but it's yeah. like we're resonating in the in like a D. Like yeah. the note or, or the color yellow or whatever. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah, like yeah, whoever yeah. likes yellow or wants to – is resonating on D, like it will match up and find each other. Exactly. Yeah. So we're just singing a song and those who like the song come around. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. I love that. And I love I love how it's not the higher or lower. Yeah. Because you kind of hear that with like frequency talk or yeah. vibration stuff. We need to raise the frequency, which kind of makes sense. But really we're just moving within a spectrum yeah. that resonates for us. And it's not higher, lower, better, worse. Like, right. Oh, we're conscious. You and yeah. I are conscious. So we have to – we have to tell people and we're going to change yeah, the world. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. You yeah. guys are stupid. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're smart. Oh my God. Which again goes back to the bullshit part. Like the spiritual bullshit. Yeah. It's like, again, like it's all spirit. So it doesn't, nothing really matters. Yeah. This is all bullshit. And so it's yeah. like lighten up and just do whatever you enjoy. Yeah. See, I love when you see that it's all spirit, then you have so many more opportunities. Yeah. Because you realize you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. You really cannot go wrong. Which yet. going back to the doubt. It's like, okay, yeah. am I making the right decision? Yeah. Well, you can't go wrong. And I know you said that to a friend of ours who was trying to make a decision on buying a, a piece of property. Yeah. And like, and you know, is this the right property? And da, 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 da. And you told her you can't go wrong. Yeah. And that's like her mantra right now. Yeah. Which is so well, she told to me, me that. She's like, yeah. you told me I can't go wrong. And I was like, well, yeah, that's true. And she's <laughs> like, okay, good. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> great. So you can buy it and that'll be great or not. And it'll be fine. Yeah. And, everything okay. will still work out. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love that. Oh, wow. I can't believe 40 minutes has already gone by. Yeah. Well, this is a juicy topic. It I, is a juicy I feel topic. like the doubt and the leaps of faith and the transitions are, like, huge. Because that's, like, the proof in the pudding. Like, that's living yeah. the spiritual lifestyle yeah. and trusting in the greater oneness. Yeah. Like, it comes down to listening to your heart, looking at the terror of the doubt, yeah. making the leap, and then building that trust yeah. muscle. And to speak at that, as far as in my experience, what has made that so incredibly more easy is, and this comes from the practice of self-inquiry, mm. which are you kind of familiar with that method or whatever like that is? asking why? Or? Well, it's, it's kind of like a who am I kind of question yeah. or what is true. Yeah. Um, I've done that, like the Byron, Byron Katie's question. Yeah, very, very similar yeah, to that in the way of realizing that I'm not who I think I am. Mm -hmm. It's like the story of myself that's afraid to get rejected mm -hmm. is completely false. And that's the big hindrance in following the heart or being authentic and true mm -hmm. is the idea that you're going to be rejected. Mm -hmm. But when you see that the idea of you cannot really be accepted or rejected, mm -hmm. then that becomes null and void. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's like Muji talks. 
I love Muji. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. And, and he's like so direct to the point, yeah. um, which doesn't leave a lot of room for dialogue, yeah. but it's still very valid. Yeah. Um, and I've, I kind of went through that phase that was totally in that discovery of what is really true about what I am. Yeah. And when you go through that process and go through that waking up, you realize that the only thing that's real is the present moment. Yeah. The only thing that even matters is the present moment. Yeah. And any idea of self is not a self at all. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's the only thing we're trying to protect or mm -hmm. hold on to mm -hmm. is an idea of someone that's going to be lovable. Mm -hmm. And when you see that that doesn't exist in any form or fashion, then there's no need to protect it and life just becomes so much easier. Mm -hmm. It's like you, it's literally like you take off a hundred pound backpack. Mm -hmm. And we've all had that experience or most of us where we're hiking and whatever. And then you get to where you're going, you take the backpack off and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you, you took like off you this. Fly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's that's how my experience feels in that sense in comparison to back then is realizing that this weight just doesn't need to be carried around. Yeah. Well, then you're just, you come down to joy. Yeah. And what's your highest joy in the moment or yeah. what do you feel like doing or the highest relaxment or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. totally. Relaxment. I think I've Relaxment. Yeah, yeah, you totally just made that up. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> relaxment. <laughs> <laughs> relaxment. Okay. So this has been epic. Yes. And we probably have a couple more minutes. Well, oh, can we tell people about the Hawaii retreat? That's what I was going to say. I was just going to say, let's talk about Hawaii. Because yeah. we both like we both have Hawaii connections. Yeah. I lived in Hawaii. Not for very long, but when I when I say I live somewhere, it's because I'm nomadic. So I take all my shit with me, which right, is like right. two suitcases. And so I went to live um, on the big island for a little bit and on the island of Maui. And my experience going to live there was just that there was this amazing connection to the spiritual flow of life. Like yeah. all the stuff that we talk about, I feel like most people that live there, like not the native Hawaiians necessarily, because I was interacting with people who moved there, yeah. but they kind of live in this trust, in this flow, which yeah. maybe even native Hawaiians do. Like they really don't care about like yeah. structure and timelines yeah. and out, outside like expectations. Yeah. It's like, no, like we're here to enjoy this beautiful paradise yeah. and hang loose like whatever goes goes exactly yeah and that's something that i felt when i first went over there and it was funny because the first time i went there probably four or five years ago i landed in hilo mm -hmm. and there was me just, too did yeah. you i had this oh, no, no, no no i landed in kona okay so i didn't get to hilo so i had this sense immediately of of home yeah and it was weird because i hadn't ever really felt that before and it wasn't like you know, ultimately my home because yeah. that's wherever my heart is. Yeah. But it was just this recognition of uh, some connection yeah. to the island. And plus everyone my entire life, not everyone, but I've always been told that I look Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. It's like people would guess my heritage or whatever yeah. and they, oh, you're from Hawaii or Pacific Island yeah. or something like that. And I'm half black and half, no, I'm black, white, and Indian. Some yeah. mix of all that shit. Yeah. And, uh, but people have always guessed that. And so when I finally got there, it was like, oh, I kind of just fit in. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Right. And I could like, just act like a local or whatever. Yeah. No one would really <laughs> question it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, we're doing a retreat December 13th through the 18th and I'm feeling like it's going to be an annual thing. I did one a couple years ago with a friend, uh, co-facilitated mm -hmm. at this same facility, which is 120 organic acre retreat center right along the coastline. Amazing. Where is it? Kona side or Hilo? Uh, or? It's Hilo side about 40 minutes south of Hilo. Okay. And uh, it's, you know, kind of wrapped up in the jungle. Yeah. Um, in, yeah, because that's the jungly side. Because Kona's yeah. more like the city kind of like Yeah, normal. it's total city. And then Hilo. Is yeah, kind of it's not a very touristy area, yeah. although, you know, people do make it over there and I recommend you go over there because yeah. it's just so beautiful. But um, we're going to, and there's so many like hot springs, mm -hmm. natural places to hike, you know, we can check out lava um, and the retreat center itself. We've got a uh, facility where we can hold educational workshops and do Amazing. yoga and yeah. body love and, and all of that. But essentially for almost $200 a day. Mm -hmm. Which for me, I think is incredible that yeah. you can come over there. We'll feed you some amazing organic food. Yeah, the food is so good that like it in is. Hawaii too, like it's just epic. The local produce. And I love how you can just walk around and then find an avocado oh at your God. feet yeah. and cut it. And there's it. like 50 kinds of avocados, 50 <laughs> kinds of mangoes. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, but we invite you know people to come out and hang out and play. Um, max capacity, I don't really know what it's going to be, yeah. but uh, I just kind of leave it open. Whoever wants to come and hang out. Um, but I think the prices are anywhere between roughly 1200 to 2200 depending on 
preference for accommodation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can share a room and you know share a bathroom with someone, and uh, it's only like twelve hundred bucks. But this week we are running the special where it's like twenty three percent off if you sign up now. Okay. But that's yeah. coming to an end this week. But I'm sure I'll do more or whatever. Okay. Oh, and then there's also the raffle drawing that we're doing. If you go to tsb81.com slash island dash raffle. I'll put the link down below. Somewhere. Oh, actually, no. Just go to tsb81.com slash Hawaii, and then I think there's a link to enter into the raffle. Okay. But you can pay for your ticket or your pass, and then if you end up winning the raffle, then you just get your money back. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. so you don't have to wait out because I think if we do get 30 attendees, I might just cut it off okay. and just work with those 30. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, you can check that out. When I feel like retreats, like, again, like, we're having these conversations about this stuff, mm-hmm. and retreats are, like, an immersive experience. Yeah. So you really, like, this is all talking in mind stuff, and yeah. it's fun, and you can, might resonate on the heart level, but, like, when you go into an environment like this for an amount of time, you experience the reality of these kinds of concepts. Yeah, yeah. and you really get, because, again, when you go on a retreat, you give yourself permission to check out. Yeah. Check out from the mental story of where you think you need to be and all yeah. of that. And you're like, you realize this is the only place I could be right now. Yeah. And then you allow yourself to fully come into the moment and of it. Surrender. Yeah. And then that's when insight really comes in and moves, yeah. you know, into the experience of being yeah. given. Yeah. But yeah, so we invite you all for that. Yay. Yay. Hi. Thanks for doing this again. Thanks for coming and over. I'd like to do on another couch. one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would love to do another one too. Perfect. But but no more. We're not committing to any No, no commitment or expectations. And also, if we never do another one, then that's awesome, too. That's it's true. Been awesome. Yeah. But uh, high five. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure you check us out on Facebook and all of these things and whatever. But we love and appreciate you. Yes. And cheers to the beauty that you already are. Bye.